everywhere. Alternative title, Kier and Present Danger. Um, uh, another alternative title, uh, Kier's Looking at You. Um, Kier's Before Bedtime. Um, uh, many, many alternative titles today. But anyway, it is a four-paper day. We've got The Telegraph, The Times, The Sun, and The Daily Mail. We're in fact start. Although I've put The Sun in the in the newspaper box, this this Clark Kent style cowlick is uh, is uh, is not pleasing to me. Um, although I've put The Sun in the newspaper box today, it's not the first one today. We've got. We're, I'm breaking it up. I'm doing it different. The Sun is actually going to be in the speed round today, and we are going to do the Daily Telegraph as the first paper today. What a what a joy, hey? What a what a fun and exciting. Um, Change from the norm. Um, hello to SK the Crusader. I believe. Are, are you tuning in from the work factory? I, I'm going to assume you are. Hello, Def B. Um, hello, Ehud Mubarak, and um, not to the other two things because I believe Meta Views and Stream Elements. Well, Stream Elements is definitely a bot, and I'm not sure if Meta Views is. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start with the Telegraph because I'm not speed rounding the Telegraph today. I just do not have the flail in me. Uh, right. So, Move my great grandfather's medal, so I stopped knocking those about. Right, uh, front page of the Daily Telegraph, top of the page. Eco war. How the environmental, uh, how the environment became a new front line in the battle of the classes. Uh, right. Um, main story: Johnson and Biden are astonished at Macron. Uh, that's the claim being briefed out from there. We've got Boris Johnson, of course, staring at a bust of Winston Churchill, and the bust of Winston Churchill stares back. Uh, lower down on the page: Patients must be able to see GP in person, says Prime Minister. Something he said to the Mail yesterday, but the te uh, Telegraph is pretending uh, that uh, they—that's just a story they've got themselves. On the right-hand side of the page: Two more suppliers to go bust. As soaring gas prices take their toll. The the government was warned about this years ago. Years and years and years. And um, also, the previous Labour manifesto discussed problems with this. But did it get fixed? Of course it didn't, because this is the fucked country. Um, Kin United 2, fuck Johnson, fuck Biden, fuck Macron. Uh, can all of them somehow lose? I would love that too. Um, at the very bottom of the page, police should use laws to jail M25 activists, uh, say government sources. Um, laws, you say? Uh, I'm fully convinced that the M25 protesters are an op, even more than I was um, you know, for elements of Extinction Rebellion. Uh, next, Matt. In the Mac cartoon, we don't actually do the work. We go and sit on the M25 till someone else does it, says a roof insulation man in that cartoon. Incredible. Matt is one of the highest paid journalists at The Telegraph. He has paid a six-figure salary for this shit. Um, news. Half of the children have already had COVID claims. Uh, Chief Medical Officer uh, Professor Chris Whitty. Uh, the angry egg, Alistair Heath, uh, screams... Biden and Macron are vandalising the liberal order they both claim to love. Um, Alistair Heath is, is, is fast becoming one of my favourite uh, columnists to read for completely unhinged arguments. Um, on the right-hand side, Dahl family to share £500 million Netflix deal. Right, inside the paper, batter replaces batsman in the laws of Chris Hitt. Guess what? Simon Heff is really annoyed about that, and we're going to come to that later. Uh, Connery's 007 was a rapist, says the director of the latest James Bond movie. For many film goers, Sean Connery's James Bond remains the ultimate ladies' man. Who's that? Who's, who says so? Uh, but Carrie um, Fukunaka, the director of the new Bond movie, has an alternative take. Connery's 007 was a rapist. Let's see if the quote uh, lives up to the headline. Uh, is it Thunderball or Goldfinger where, like, basically Sean Connery's character rapes a woman? She's like, no, no, no. And he's like, yes, yes, yes. That wouldn't fly today, said F um, Fukunaga. Yep, fair enough. Um, the director of No Time to Die is understood to be referring to a scene in Thunderball between Connery and Molly Peters. Peters plays Patricia Fearing, a nurse at a health farm. When they first meet, she firmly rejects his advances, including pushing him away when he forcibly kisses her. But after he nearly dies on a traction machine nicknamed The Rat... Bond says he will complain to her boss as a frightened fearing tells him, you wouldn't tell Dr. Wade, please, I'd lose my job. Well, I suppose my silence would have a price. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fearing backs away saying, you don't mean, oh, no, oh, no, oh, yes, says Bond, and pursues her into the steam room where he immediately removes her clothes. Yes, certainly sounds like a sexual assault, doesn't it? 
Uh, Fukunaga was breaking, uh, was speaking to the Hollywood Reporter to promote the next Bond film, which has its world premiere next week. Uh, Connery is in similar force, similarly forceful in Goldfinger when he wrestles with Honor Blackman as pus- pussy galore, pinning her to the ground until she finally succumbs to his charms. Yeah, this stuff is toxic shit, man. And it's good, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I just read the Goldfinger one, um, Heathmore 2401. Goldfinger is the one with literal textual corrective rape, too. Yeah, the, the books themselves are even are even worse. Um, on page six, Eustace questions Biden's grasp of Northern Ireland protocol intricacies. Uh, UN debates Taliban request to join meeting in New York. Johnson urges leaders to help world on fire. Um, they've done a thing where they... Uh, numbered all the people who are in the in the room there. Who's in the room? Lloyd Austin, Lloyd Austin U.S. Secretary of Defense. Um, not no relation to um, famous dog fan. Uh, Jake Sullivan, U.S. National Security Advisor. Melanie uh, um, Nakagawa, Special Assistant to the President, and Senior Director for Climate. Dr. Amanda Sloat, Specialist. Special Assistant to the President and Senior Director of Europe at the National Security Council. Dalip Singh, the Deputy Director, Advisor of, and Deputy National um, Executive Committee Director, uh, ne- ne- no, National Ec- Economic uh, Committee Director, ex-New York Federal Reserve Markets Chief. Philip Rieker, Charge d'Affaires at the U.S. Embassy in London, veteran U.S. diplomat. And on the U.K. side, William Gelling, Private Secretary for Foreign Affairs. Jack Doyle, Director of Communications. Former journalist for the Daily Mail, uh, Karen Pierce, UK ambassador to Washington, one of the FCDO's most senior diplomats. John Bew, the special advisor, head of the foreign policy, um, head of foreign policy at Downing Street's policy unit. Who's his boss? Why spikes uh, Manira Mirza? Uh, Sir Stephen Lovegrave, national security minister, advisor, ran the Ministry of Defence and the former Department of Energy and Climate Change. And Liz Truss. Which we have to remind ourselves, who we have to remind ourselves, Port Market Liz Truss is now the fucking foreign secretary. Kenny 92, rewatching Bond films and listening to Kill James Bond analyze them has been interesting for that, yeah. Hey, late to the game. Uh, late to game, how are you doing? Thank you for your first time chat, thank you for joining us. Uh, right, moving on in the telegraph. Um, it's such a nightmare, I don't know why I bother getting the telegraph. Really annoying to read through. Censorship spyware lurks inside Chinese smartphones. This is talking about Jamais, uh, Jamais um, handsets and uh, the Lithuanians have suggested that uh, they found code in them that uh, that bans certain phrases. The phrases are all in Chinese. Um, this is, you know, this is software applied in the Chinese mainland that, conti- you know, features that continue uh, to be present in phones that they ship over here. Um, it's a real, like, heavily spun thing this um there's another story uh, covered in all the papers today and about another teenager who uh, took her own life after taking um roaccutane the anti-acne drug uh, apparently she didn't have very bad skin at all um but also uh the um yeah this drug has has suicidal um, ideation as a side effect, and yet they still uh, pre- uh, prescribe it. Um, llamas from the antibody production facility at the University of Reading could provide a new front treatment against COVID-19. Keir Starmer will not be happy about this. Keir Starmer uh, famously uh, despises alpacas and alp- um, uh, llamas. Late to the game, says, Rev me catch you live. Uh, thanks, Insomnia. Uh, yeah, I had three hours sleep last, last night because uh, kid in the room woke up and couldn't sleep, and uh, she got back to sleep, but I didn't, so that was a fun time. Uh, on uh, page 9, Yorkshire Ripper refused to shield in prison before COVID death, inquest told. Murderer of 13 women in the 1970s chose not to follow preventive measures for inmates, coroner hears. Okay. Uh, gunman target Ukrainian president's aid. Child won't eat their greens, blame biology. Researchers found that a chemical in brassica crops makes children much more likely to shun sprouts. We've known this for a long time. Your taste buds change over time. Bitter tastes become less bitter as you get older. Um, nurse who found murder-suicide couple seats £9 million. A nurse who discovered the bodies of a multimillionaire American businessman and his wife in a murder-suicide case is suing their estate and seeking damages for emotional trauma. Lisa Ann Hayes, who regularly cared for Alexandra Hobbs, wife of prominent investor Erwin Hobbs, Walked into their Minnesota mansion in 2019 to find them both dead. Investigators found that Irwin had shot his wife before turning the gun on himself. That is a phrase that should be banned 
Um, that is a phrase that should be banned from papers using that to, before turning the gun on himself. Um, Cronathan, why is the Yorkshire Ripper story in the paper nothing about its newsworthy? Well, it's because the um, inquest into his death is ongoing. So effectively, it's an inquest report, but they framed it very, uh, given it way more uh, precedent than it, it really should have. Uh, Biden's spending sparks Democrat divide is their spin from Washington. The president makes bid to unite his warring party on investment plans ahead of midterm elections. Um, there's a picture of some rangers carrying a sedated 30-foot-long python away from an Indonesian village. They later released the snake, which is estimated to weigh 220 pounds, back into the neighboring jungle of uh, Pelalawan on the island of Sumatra. Look at that chonker. Um, right, moving on, uh, in the, okay, so here's the comments section. William Sitwell, who I was assured had been cancelled, but seems to still be writing for the Daily Telegraph, writes a heartwarming message for lovers of great British cheese. This is him just jumping on this thing about cheese being good for you. Uh, Catherine Pepinster says, anti-Christian zealots have a new tactic. Militant progressive secularists don't just hate my religion, they hate its followers too. Um, Alistair Heath says, Biden and Macron are vandalizing the liberal order they claim to love. These overrated accidental presidents have plenty in common, not least a shared dislike of Britain. I mean, I'm no fan of either of them, but they were voted into power. Um, yeah, funny how that happens when you're cancelled, isn't it, Heathmore2401? Still just seem to be in the paper. Um, Con Coughlin, not at all a... a, 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 a just a direct plant for the um, security services, says Europe is wrapped around Putin's little finger. Our increasing reliance on Russian energy has placed the tyrannical leader in an impregnable position. I mean, they really overplay what power Putin has. Um, uh, the letters are real. Do you want to, should we do some telegraph letters? There's some really bad ones in here. Robin Eatwell of Ockfield Uck says, I now see why there will be a shortage of toys at Christmas this year. France has thrown them all out of the pram. Uh, Deirdre Lay of Cranley says, Sir, my house is insulated, but I am unable to use the M25. Um, Sir Anthony Selden, biographer of Tony Blair, writes, Sir, there is much to applaud in Nick Timothy's enconium to the departed schools minister, Nick Gibb. For ten years, he fought to raise academic standards for all and for rigour in numeracy and literacy across schools. Bollocks. Um, yet he also became a growing block to reform and creative thinking. Social mobility is in decline. Employers are increasingly frustrated by the lack of broad skills among school leavers. Yeah, because that's all education's for, isn't it? Just creating little economic units for employers. Um... The neglect of technology has come to roost during the pandemic and the failure to comprehend what the best school systems abroad are doing, not least in artificial intelligence. This fucking thing, artificial intelligence in schools just ends up being surveillance. Fuck you. Um, uh, is no longer tenable. So let's celebrate a great warrior in education, but let's also grasp exactly how quickly education policy now needs to evolve. Oh, God. Tony Young, not Toby Young, writes... Sir, the sizes of car tyres are always given in a mixture of imperial and metric units. For example, a tyre described as 17515 will have a width of 175mm and will fit a wheel with a diameter of 15 inches. Who gives a fuck? Thank you for um, redeeming posture check, mother. Good to see you. First in the queue, it's a mother stream. My mum is what is tuning in. Hi, Ma, how you doing? Mm. Mm, delicious mustard. Uh, right, so moving on. Anyway, that's Telegraph Letters. Uh, as, uh, as unhinged as you might expect. Don't worry, there's more unhinged stuff to come. Um, in the Features and Arts section, the main feature is, is the eco-war now a class struggle? When was it not? Hello, Mark. Uh, right. Um, pity those who've missed out on malt loaf. It's time the under-35s discovered the delights of sticky tea time treats, says Xanthi Clay. Saw it! This is fucking insane. Saurine is in every supermarket. Loads of kids have saurine in their lunch boxes. The notion that children don't know about what malt loaf is or that malt loaf is some hidden secret of the boomers is just maddening. Okay, uh, by the way, I watched the episode of Great British Bake Off that these people have turned into this um, great revelation that nobody knows what malt loaf is. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, they all managed to bake. It's just people don't generally bake malt loaf now because... And here's the, here's the secret. Saurine's delicious, and it's much easier to just buy it off the shelf rather than cook a bloody malt loaf for yourself. 
It's like mayonnaise. People who make their own mayonnaise are unhinged. Like, why would you bother? Um, Michael Deacon says, don't panic, folks. Here's Boris Johnson's guide to surviving the winter crisis. Uh, yeah, here is one of two insane columns from um, Simon Heffer, who says, why I'm proud to be a called a gammon. Now, you'll see this... Um, uh, XMN420 uh, says, what is this malt loaf of which you speak? Heathmore2401 uh, says, who missed out on malt loaf? I had loads growing up and I'm 25. Yeah, I, uh, my mother, who was in the chat, uh, regularly gave me malt loaf when I was a child. Sorry, in love with the butter, exactly. Anyway, so um, you'll see across the papers today and a lot on social media as well, this story that Ofcom has put out a list of banned words. It's completely untrue. Ofcom did some audience research where they discussed... Um, with a, a broad swathe uh, of, of people, uh, of members of the public, of what kind of terms do you think are offensive or you find offensive on um, in TV? And among them was stuff like um, was stuff like Ramona and Gammon and Snowflake and Karen and etc. So um, we've got Judy Bindle in here saying Karen is a sexist, classist insult uh, and claiming to have no notion of uh, you have have had no idea that it was uh, ever connected to um, uh, African American culture in the US and and mainly about white American women using their privilege to uh, get away with racism essentially uh, and then on the other side we've got Simon uh, Simon uh, Heffer here saying uh, I couldn't actually care less. I make no apology for my age, gender, class, or boomer gammon views. And if anyone wishes to mock uh, mock any of them, good luck. Thank you, Simon. I'll take that. I appreciate the luck, and I will continue to mock them. Right, I'm glad that... The um, only person I know who makes mayo does it for allergy reasons. Oh, yeah, well, that, I mean, that's fair enough. But I just mean, you know, outside of... E. Blair fan says homemade mayo tastes better. That's why. Yeah, but you've got to think about the taste-effort ratio, right? It's all out of whack. I, I get this really good Polish... Um, Mayo, that's amazing. Also, really like the QP Mayo from um, for, uh, Japanese QP Mayo. But any anyway, obviously, if you wish to make your own Mayo, great. Um, Chronotherm, the newsletter is the, the the Telegraph is the newsletter of an eyes wide shut party that hasn't received outside news since 1904. Uh, accurate. Um, hey, Mr. Gump, good to see you. Um, right elsewhere, uh, Martha Wainwright, who I am a big fan of, gets a uh, four stars uh, review of her show at the Union Chapel. Uh, in the arts agenda, Robbie Collin, who is one of the few sanish people at the at the Telegraph, and and I I do rate him as a reviewer. I wish he was just not at the Telegraph. Says no time to sneer. The new Bond film really matters. Well, it does matter in the sense that it will keep a lot of cinemas going, including independent ones. Um, wood carving so fine it seems to flutter before your very eyes. Uh, Grinling Gibbons, centuries in the making. Um, an exhibition marking the death of wood carver Grinling Gibbons, which is an incredible name. Um, 1648 to 1721 may sound like a lovely idea, but how practically can it be done? After all, Gibbons, who in 1693 was appointed master carver to King William II, decorated the interiors of palaces, churches, and stately homes. Many of his ensembles remain in situ. Will you carefully prize off a few of his carvings from St. James Piccadilly? Um, well, no, they don't do that. They, uh, what do they do? Pictures, I guess, and, uh... Animating his thing and including um, some wallpaper, intricately clad wooden prosthetic legs, uh, and an Alexander McQueen show from an Alexander McQueen show, and uh, loads of other stuff inspired by him, basically. Um, they'd all be fine with Burke, but that's rhyming slang for lady parts, yeah. Berkshire Hunt. Or Berkshire Hunt. Uh. Derek Williams is in the O-Bits. Documentary maker who won a galaxy of awards for films tackling subjects from health to pollution has died. Uh, he died uh, August 2nd. Um, he was known for films including The Shadow of Progress, uh, Hadrian's War, and The Reach for Rome. Uh, those are books he wrote. Uh, the very reverent Derek Hole, real name, uh, provost of Leicester Cathedral, whose gifts were reflected in his appointment as chaplain to the Queen, has died. And Richard Buckley, a fashion journalist and editor of a string of magazines that include Vogue, uh, Vogue Homs International, Vogue Homs International, has died. Uh, he died September 19th, 2021. Um... He grew increasingly critical of the digital age, claiming that today's fashion journalists lacked even a basic knowledge of how garments are made. Um, right, in the TV reviews... The, uh, oh, tonight, new new Taskmaster, that is always good. Uh, the, in the, in the t uh, contestants in this season, Alan Davies, Guz Khan, Morgana Robinson, Desiree Birch, 
and Victoria Corin Mitchell. Uh, and their reshow and the new statesman um, Rick Mail's uh, comedy about be, uh, about the Tory bastard uh, suitably named Alan Bastard is back uh, is a, is now available on BritBox. Well worth watching, Mum. I still need to send you the login for BritBox. Remind me, and I will send it to you. Uh, right, that is the Daily Telegraph. Obviously, we don't bother with the supplements in the Telegraph usually. Uh, give me your scores for that anyway. Uh, I'm going to do yeah. It's, it's going to be a speed round. Yeah, I will. Just remind yeah, remind me, Mara, and I'll send it to you. I, uh, <laughs> Mick, just put it in the chat for her. I, ref I will not. You nearly got me. No, you didn't nearly get me. Um, C122, H122 says uh, um, uh, it's a negative nice, uh, the minus 69 for uh, the Telegraph. I think that's probably more than fair. Um, I'll give it the minus quadruple nice, uh, minus 69, 69, 69, 69, uh, to follow Heathmore 2401's uh, triple negative nice. Okay, so time for, um, score for the Telegraph. Minus so tired, says E. Blair fan. Uh, right, so hang on. Boo! Uh, Thank you for redeeming Hydrate. Much appreciated, C122, H122. Good to do that before the speed round. Mustard. Uh, Fluff Weasel gives, it, uh, f uh, gives the Telegraph four gammon slices out of ten. Right, let me just do a quick roll call. Um, Kinu92. Also, the original Ofcom research into offensive language drawing up the guidelines from a while back is fascinating reading. Yeah, well, there's, it's, there's new research following on from that. You can, you, you can, uh, it's linked in today's newsletter. Uh, which is actually, which I was about to say is well worth reading, but I would say that because I wrote it. But if you don't get the newsletter, why not sign up for free and see what I spend every morning at sort of 5.30 a.m. doing? Okay, uh, yeah, quick roll call. Uh, I'm the Broken Bottle Boy, aka Mick Wright. You can follow me on Twitter at Broken Bottle Boy. It's good if you do. Um, SK the Crusader is here. He's in the Mod Squad and at the Work Factory. Um, in the chat today, Academy Impossible, Bing Cortana, C122, H122, Dan LaRosa, Def B, um, E Blair fan, Ehud, um, Ehud Barak. Everybody loves Ray Mondo, first in the queue, aka Mother in the Room. Uh, Fluff Weasel, Heathmore2401, Iviotic. Um, uh, Jordan DH, hello Jordan, good to see you. Kinu92, always massively um, appreciated contributors to the chat, as is Chronotherm. Late to the game, um, Insomnia bringing them into the chat for the first uh, time uh, in, a, in a while. Uh, Lilith Mysterio is here, um, Moran Skell, uh, Metaviews, Mr. Gump, Pablo Bonzo, thank you for being here Mr. Bump. Pablo Bonzo, always excellent on, on, on Twitter and here. Uh, Rimestino, Snur, Soul Chicken, Spike Trap Claire, always... Very appreciated to see you guys here. V and K, and finally, last but not least, XMNN420 is here. 420, blaze it up indeed. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, Pablo Bonza says, apparently radio listeners are okay with axel accidental swears now. Uh, well, that's good. I, I mean, yeah. Um, Chronotherm gives, um, gives the Telegraph minus... Uh, 10,058 millimeters of chonking python. SK, the Crusader has subscribed again and is now on a nine-month streak. Thank you very much for that, SK. It's much appreciated. Right, okay, so uh, I reckon I can do the sun. Hey, SK, how's it going? Um, you, you joined me on a rare uh, Mick Wright's mom stream where mom is here in the chat, so that's good. It's not going to change any of the swearing or general... Um, Whatever, but you know. Uh, right, so I'm going to try and do the sun in at 1 minute 30, uh, which would be a new PB for the sun. I think it's difficult. We may return uh, to just go quickly through the letters. <laughs> First in the queue, only comes here for the swearing. I learnt them from you. Uh, right, let's -a go. Uh, let's go with the sun. Uh, here we go. What, by the way, uh, Mum, you missed... Uh, Dr. Devlin was, uh, did, did the speed round yesterday. And very good it was too. Right, here we go. Although she is now, in, she's currently in Bristol, so. Right, uh, 1 minute 30. Time starts now. Right, front page of the sun. Uh, um, uh, Brittany, dad wants to take my kids away. Uh, coverage of the cup. Uh, Hammer blow. Man United nil. West Ham won. The main story is that they've uh, identified one of these protesters in Insulate Britain who they claim has a £1 million property empire. 
Um, and uh, the headline, Upper Crusty, which is not a bad pun, is it? Uh, right, moving on. Uh, on page three, that isn't page three, but is page three. Maura Higgins from Love Island is wearing a golden bikini for reasons. Uh, also on that page, T-Rex a dino slower. Beast had top speed of three miles per hour. Uh, so that they're more on the that builder. Knob the builder is the headline they give it. Uh, we'd rather quit Strictly Job than get a COVID jab, is what the dancers say. Britney's custody fears for her boys. Uh, Moss be a role model. Lilla Moss is now a supermodel like her mother. Um, how Chateau Brangelina went from rosé future to a sour wine. Uh, Red, Rod Little is awful, still going on about Doctor Who. Uh, fewer ads, more baking. Bake Off viewers are annoyed about the number of ads. Uh, the snake gets a look in. In Bazaar, someone wore a dress. Um, uh, uh, Rag and Bone Man is, is angry at uh, property developers. Um, Naomi Harris is pictured in a bikini. Um... In the TV thing, they recommend uh, the Prince Philip thing. Um, I've been with Hobby for 30 years and never told him I love him, says Sarah Beanie. And in the sport, the big cheese, Hero Polter. I just love beating Yanks. It's great. There you go. Uh, Fluff Weasel, one million pound property empire equals flat in London, probably. Yeah, I've actually not read the story yet. I, I will, let's hang on. Let's jump in and have a specific look at what they claim for the one million pound property. Eco -pro -pro protester and property heir Joshua Smith was last night told only people with lots of cash have got time to sit in the road making middle making other people's lives miserable. Who said that? Yeah. So here are, here are the the properties he owns in his million pound empire. There they are, million pound empire. And of course they found a. Uh, an Extinction Rebellion activist who, who goes topless. Mum of one, Laura Amherst, 31, says she's earned £1,200 since starting her OnlyFans account on Sunday and expecting to make around £18,000 a month. Whoopie day. Uh, right, uh, I'll just do the... I will do the letters from the sun because we normally do the letters. There's... And also... Why doesn't Sarah Beanie love her husband? I, I'll just check that in a second as well. Uh, hang on. Why doesn't Sarah Beanie love her husband? Do the Russians love their children too? Does Sarah Beanie love her husband? Uh, she says... Uh, we have other ways of saying it. It's a bit of a standing joke, but it started about 30 years ago. And once something's set for 30 years, you can't change that. But we do tell the kids we love them. She also says if a woman is enjoying sex, she should tell the man what to do. Yeah, fair enough. Uh... And uh, I don't know why we need to know about Sarah Beanie's marriage anyway. Um, and then um, the, the £50 letter today comes from Chris Gilson, who writes, Thank God there's now an injunction on the insulate Britain morons who have been blocking the M25. They could have got someone killed. So it's right that they are now they could now face prison if they ignore the government action. Climate change is worldwide. And we're doing our bit in the UK. They should go to China and India if they want to protest. Classic that. King United 2 wants Sarah Beanie to DM him. Okay. Fluff Weasel. XR Bristol have their own cricket club, which is both very XR and very Bristol. 100%. 100%. Um... Right. Anyway, that is the sun. Give me your scores on that if you want. Uh, we're going to move on now to the times. And then, of course, to the uh, usual um, shitty conclusion of the stream, which is the Daily Mail. Uh, you'll see uh, from... Today's background, a preview of tomorrow's newsletter, which is going to be about press coverage of um, press coverage of Keir Starmer's uh, essay that he's released. Um, Chronotherm says, don't the police have a cricket team already? Well, indeed. Right, front of the Times. Freshers Week is back. Raving with Generation COVID. Uh, on the right-hand side, Deborah Ross says, I'm planning a wellness brand of my own. Still rack, really squeezing out some stuff out of the fact that Holly Willoughby started her own wellness brand. Um, the story at the top of the page, virus will just end up causing a cold, says creators, creator of the Oxford Jab. Well, we can only hope. Uh, the main story, 1.5 million households face rise in energy bills. Prices are likely to come down for two years. They're acting like this is, uh, this is something that cannot be solved. The government could, for instance, nationalise the energy industry. I mean, it won't, but it could. This is one of the things it told us that it would be able to do with Brexit. No, with Brexit, we'll have total control. We can we can um, do state aid if we want to. Well, let's do some state aid. Uh, by, well, by state aid, I mean 
nationalise the energy service, uh, um, companies. On the right-hand side, Batsman clean bowled out by equality push. Who who gives a shit about this? Uh, by the way, um, people sent me some stuff on this. Um, in the 18th, in, in the 19th century, um, people at bat in cricket were, were called batters, right? So it's not that new. It doesn't really matter. And the only good thing about like the, uh, I'm very delighted, in fact, that it's making uh, Simon Heffer even more angry. Perhaps soon enough, he will explode like Mr. Cretius in um, uh, Harry, uh, Monty Python's uh, Meaning of Life. I think he said Harry Potter and the Meaning of Life. Which would be a very different film. Um, uh, on page three, Magic Circle conjures up its first female chief. Uh, yet the new president of the Magic Circle is 28-year-old uh, magician who does magic uh, about uh, green issues and also uh, ballet-themed magic shows. She sounds really cool. The other good thing is um, the vice president of the Magic Circle is a woman as well. Uh, we need more female magic prison guards. Uh, Chris McRae says, Wild Moon for now. She missed a trick not calling it Holly Well Obey. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, you're a brand new genius, Chris. Um, uh, on page five, British tarot card reader didn't see lava flow coming. A 40 foot wave of lava devoured villages on the island of La Palma. Um, Fabina Fazell, an online tarot card reader, had reason to consider herself lucky. Can't anticipate like things like this happening, said Fazell, 36, who moved to the Canary Islands from London a year ago. This is suggesting like that tarot card reading even purports to be direct fortune telling. Um, pupils to hold mock trial of slavery MP. Pupils took part in an eight-hour mock trial of a millionaire Tory MP said to have benefited from the proceeds of slavery. Richard Drax, the Tory MP for South Dorset, was put in the fictional dock because of his ancestors' involvement in the slave trade. Forty pupils aged 12 to 18 took on the roles of prosecution and defence lawyers or joined three juries. Clive Stafford Smith, the uh, human rights lawyer, organised the mock trial through his charity 3D Centre and acted as judge. All three juries found Drax guilty, though they dismissed a second charge that he had acted like his ancestors while performing his role as MP. Pupils from All Saints School in Weymouth and the Woodruff School in Lyme Regis took part in the event at Bridport Town Hall in Dorset. That's hilarious to me. Um, but I guarantee that's going to get turned into indoctrinating of children. Um, on pages six and seven, Johnson blocks French and tells Macron, Donnez-moi un break. Jesus Christ. He's so... Like, whenever you think, oh, he can't be more embarrassing, he's more embarrassing. Uh, and by Bonzo, there will be a fiery death in your future. Uh, SK, thank you for um, banning the big follows person. Um, police brace for cat and mouse battle with roving M M25 activists. And of course, the Times doxes various activists because they love to do that. Um, their coverage of the Ofcom list, gammon on offensive words list. Um, yeah. Uh, e. Blair fan, woke trial of MP for slavery as teachers indoctrinate kids. That will be the male headline, guaranteed. Uh, on page 11, mystery woman found on rock was jeweler to the stars. So that woman that they found um, on an island uh, in Croatia uh, speaks perfect English but has no memory. She used to make jewellery for Diana Ross and Brigitte Bardot. She's been named by friends as Daniela Adamkova. 56, a Slovakian woman who spent part of her life in the US and Ireland. They contacted police after appeal to identify it attracted worldwide interest. The woman known as Dana had cuts and bruises to her face when she was spotted by a fisherman on a remote craggy outcrop on the Isle of Kirk. It is thought that she had been in the area where bears are known to prowl for days. She's unable to say who she was or how she got there. Friends say she left uh, Czechoslovakia for the US in 1984 when she was 19. None of her friends or family wanted to go with her, so she went alone. She enrolled in fashion school where she graduated with an emphasis on jewellery. Uh, she divorced her husband in 2000, returned to Slovakia, where she remained until 2008. She then moved to Ireland and, according to family, worked in homeless shelters between 2013 and 2018. Then she went back to Slovakia, where she continued to produce jewellery. Um, yeah, so nobody still knows how she ended up there at the moment. Uh, have I seen the Kermit speech? Yes, I have. Ridiculous. Also, Miss Piggy would definitely vote Tory. On pages 12 and 13, ministers prepare for long-term gas price increases. And in Quentin Let terrible um, parliamentary sketch. He um, is very patronising of Angela Rayner and says, Rayner connects with below-the-belt blows. Interesting that when Labour lay a few gloves on the Tories, and frankly, can you imagine Keir Starmer managing it? And, you know, again, no massive fan of Rayner either, but she did a decent job yesterday. It, it, when Tories uh, say funny things, he, he chuckles away. But, of course, 
if a Labour person manages to, to, to get some hits and on the Tory, they're below the belt. Uh, I think she should have gone harder. I think she actually should just kick him in the balls. Um, in the um, diary column, the sure sign of being middle-aged, according to Jeremy Vine, is in your approach to trains. When I was a teenager, I'd always catch them as they were leaving the station, the broadcaster says. You can jump aboard a train as it started and move. In my 20s, it felt wise to take a seat before the whistle blew. By the age of 35, Vine above was arriving 20 minutes early. Now, he says, I arrive while the factory in Derby is spraying the final coat of paint on the carriage. Jeremy Vine, you are Alan Partridge and I claim my £50. Um, iPhone will diagnose you if depressed is a new story that's out there. Don't believe it. Do not believe it. And now, sorry, I've got to get this because it could be uh, a package. Bear with me. And I'm back. I hope you uh, enjoyed talking amongst yourselves. What is it? What is it? It's a bag. That's all it is. It's a bag. What bag is this? Oh, like it's a pannier type bag thing. Okay. I didn't order this. Um... Uh, yeah, the science behind your phone deciding if you're depressed, it's phrenology again, isn't it? Chronotherm, your mum did a speed run on Das Capital in 1 minute 15 seconds. Um, pages 16 and 17. Unprotected children will catch virus ones. Witty, here is a picture of a chonking bull. Um, uh, what is this bull called? It's massive. Look at him. Anyway, heckin' chonker bull. Um... Flashy frocks with side order of 70s, uh, Anna Murphy reports from Milan Fashion Week. A prisoner left with a bed, uh, a prisoner, this is a horrendous story, fair warning, content warning here for um, death of a child. A prisoner was left with a dead baby after giving birth alone. 18 year old prisoner who gave birth alone at night in her cell, bit through the umbilical cord to free the baby. He was either stillborn or died soon after a watchdog found. The prisons and probation ombudsman said that the child was dead by the time medical help arrived in the morning. A report identified multiple failings in the handling of the pregnancy. Other people should be prosecuted for that. Horrendous. Um, Pablo Bonzo says that that, uh, that that bull reminds him of the fat ox of Whitley Bay. Amazing. Yeah, I know. Inc just a sickening story there. And again, comes back to comes back to the fact that... The, 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 Oh, God, it's just horrendous. Um, uh, page 21. Scrapyard Chief's son wins battle over £4 million fortune. Whoopie do. Conservative council boss has been suspended amid claims of... Uh, now, they put this in the headline, sexist speech. So let's see if sexist speech is actually sexist. Um, Lee Higgins, deputy mayor, leader of Melton, Melton Borough Council in Leicestershire, has been accused of making the remarks while presenting an award on Friday night. His comments angered some attending... And he has been suspended by the Conservative group pending an internal investigation. He asked women to stand up so he could take a look at them. Yeah, that's a sexist comment at an event. Um, Debbie Longley, who was at the event to pick up an award on behalf of a friend, said she was outraged. It's a business and community event, you absolute sexist, chauvinistic tool. Plus, I'm not there to be og ogled. Another attendee added, what an awful speech. Shame it was such a lovely evening. Joe Orson, the council leader, confirmed that Higgins has been suspended from the Conservative group for 21 days pending an investigation. <sighs> on pages 23, wings from nature turn microchip into smallest glider. Scientists creating the world's smallest glider, a microchip fitted with wings that's decided to float on the breeze. Guarantee you they find a way uh, to turn that into something that spies on you. Also on that page, uh, the, 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 the James Bond story, uh, they give it the headline, Connery's 007, a rapist, says director. Uh, well, analyze those scenes and that's pretty much the case. Uh, C122H122 says, I bet she was in jail for something she shouldn't have been in for. What's a high chance, isn't there? They repeat the, um, they repeat the terrible Catelyn Moran uh, ad to students about why students should read the Times. Do 
uh, read yesterday's newsletter. I think yesterday's newsletter or the day before's newsletter uh, to um, to find out why it's bad. Uh, David Aronovich says the PM should explain his climate conversion. I think David Aronovich should explain how he's so easily gulled by people with fake uh, leather jackets. Uh, James Marriott, uh, the uh, most baby face of the Times columnist, says students are facing segregation by wealth, but he doesn't really get into like what the state has to do with that. Just uh, it's just another way to attack universities effectively. Uh, Janice Turner. Uh, gives us the headline, shortages are turning us into Soviet housewives. Uh, that uh, because she couldn't find a can of her favourite sardines. She also writes about uh, the story of 2,000 swimming pools being at risk of being closed uh, and says, with so much emphasis on wild swimming, no one cares about ugly 1960s leisure centres anymore. Ridiculous. They do. Lots of people do. There are many local campaigns to keep swimming um, swimming pools open. Um, I write more about this in the newsletter today. It's it's very frustrating to me because basically uh, the pricey for the newsletter is this. Um, the Times will never, ever make it about systematic failings or accept that the governments that it keeps supporting, whether it's the Blair government, the Cameron government, um, the Johnson government... Uh, are fundamentally the reason for all these closures because they refuse to invest in public infrastructure and uh, and pour that m and push more and more money, um, you know, uh, into the private sector. Uh, it's frustrating. Anyway, read the newsletter. It's quite angry. Um, Ian Martin, the awful Ian Martin, says the pent pact only proves the EU is a paper tiger. Uh, he's just written his column about how Europe is bad and we're good again. Um, in the terror, uh, the the paper's uh, money editor, James Coney, writes in the in the Thunderer, lecturers fight to save gold-plated pensions is futile. This is essentially uh, part 5001 of an ongoing part work series called Rupert Murdoch Hates Unions. In a birthdays today, well, it's Bruce Springsteen's birthday, 72. Happy birthday to the boss. Baroness Loella Benjamin, happy birthday to her. She is 72. Famous, of course, for being the presenter of Play School uh, and an actress and a children's campaigner and the vice president of Bernardo's. Um, Henry Blofeld, the cricket commentator, over Test Match Special until 2017, is 82. Eric Bogle, the singer-songwriter, is 77. Sherry Booth, um... Barrister, recorder until 2015, is uh, 67. Alistair Campbell, not that one. The cricketer for Zimbabwe is 49. Frank Cottrell Boyce, the screenwriter, is 62. General James Everard, the NATO Deputy Supreme Allied Commander in Europe until 2020. And the Commander of the Field Army until 2016 is 59. Lord Nicholas Hamblin, Justice of the Supreme Court, is 64. Julio Iglesias, the singer, is 78. Sir Richard Lambert the chairman of the British Museum and editor of the Financial Times until 2001, director general of the CBI until 2011, is 77. Lord Edward Llewellyn of Steep, the UK ambassador to France until 2021, chief of staff to the prime minister until 2016, is 56. Lord Colin Lowe of Dalston, the chairman of the Royal National Institute of Blind People until 2009, is 79. Charles Leisach, the uh, lawyer and writer, is 80. Um, Sir Richard McComb, the Lord Justice of Appeal until 2021 is nice, 69. Baroness Ganista McIntosh of Hudnall, the principal of the Guildhall School of Music and Drama until 2003 is 75. Katie Mitchell, the theatre director, associate director, including the National Theatre, RSC and Royal Court Theatre is 57. Dane Karen Pierce, the diplomat, UK ambassador to the US is 62. Carl Pilkington, uh, broadcaster, is 49. Shanzi Reed, winner of the BMX World Championships in 2007, 2008, and 2010, is 33. Helen Richardson Walsh, the hockey player, Olympic gold medalist in 2016, is 40. Jeff Squire, the rugby union player, is 70. Norma Winston, the jazz singer, is 80. Nicholas Witchell, um, BBC uh, appointed uh, Royal Arse Licker, is 68. Mark Woodford, tennis player and six-time Wimbledon Wimbledon Men's Doubles Championship champion between 1993 and 2000 is 56. On this day in 480 BC, the Greeks defeated the Persians at the naval battle of Salamis, uh, an island near Athens. And the last word in this column today goes to Roberta Flack, speaking to Billboard magazine in 2018, who said, I know what it is to go over the same th songs over and over and to try to make them perfect. It's interesting and it's hard and it's difficult. Uh, okay, in the... Um, 
Yes, happy birthday to Katie Mitchell, says Mr. Grump. I agree. Um, in the corrections and clarifications today, in drop testing firms claim approved status, news August 17th, we allege that assured screening had been removed from the official government list of approved PCR test providers, failing to meet adequate standards and was wrongly representing to the public that it was approved. We accept that these claims are untrue. Assured screening was temporarily omitted from two lists of official test providers, an error by the Department of Health and Social Care, but it is government approved and listed on all relevant government test provider lists. We apologize for the damage caused. We said that Valerie Brown is believed to be part of Insulate Britain. Miss Brown states that she has supported the group on social media, but is not part of it. And finally, a map gave an inaccurate depiction of the borders of India and other Asian states. We apologize for the error. And uh, just one letter from their page today from Lindsay Warden in Suffolk. Sir, on the topic of hiccups and what causes them, years ago my science teacher, in response to my somewhat disruptive hiccups, instructed me to stick my little fingers in my ears, take a big gulp of air, and swallow hard. It works every time. That'd be good if that does work. Later game says my mum would have been 64 today. Uh, well, I'm, my condolences to you, later game. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and a happy, and a, and a, I don't know, a, a uh, remembrance to her. Uh, C122, read the times. I have a big house, Moran. Uh, yeah. Um, why no apology for WMD from uh, David Aronovich? Because he is impossible to uh, apologize. C122, H122, people complaining about food shortages under capitalism but blaming socialism. The classic maneuver. Uh, in the world news, Trump tops poll as voters regret supporting Biden. Mm. Police can stop travelers based on race. A court in the Netherlands has. Ruled, uh, but only if they're wearing blackface. No, that's that's not true. Um, Lithuania, alert over Chinese smartphones that censor and spy. Again, very twisted uh, representation on that story. What does a woman need in space? Lots of face cream. Uh, that's tr that's used from China. Didi Tang in Beijing says, when NASA's most mostly male engineers contemplated the needs of female astronauts in 1978, they came up with the first space makeup kit. Today is China attempts to increase the number of women in orbit. The country's brightest minds have focused on skincare, sending 60 bottles of toner, 30 of serum, and 30 of facial cream into the heavy into the heavens, enough to last one woman astronaut six months on the nation's new space station. The next crew heading into space next month have not been named, but Wang Yangping, 41, who spent two weeks in orbit in 2013, is the front runner. During her last space journey, she taught a science lesson to 60 million pupils. Of the 21 contenders that have been named so far, only two are female, Wang and Liu Yang, who is 42. Uh, a spiritual leader revered by millions of Indians told his followers in an apparent suicide note that he killed himself before a disciple could claim he had had an affair. That is in India. That is uh, Narendra Giri, who is 72. And um, the, the Times once again breaches uh, guidelines on... Uh, suicide reporting by naming the method. So Max Factor will eventually sponsor the ISS, says Lilith Mascara. Well, we can only assume, yeah. Uh, on page 34, Swampland Hunt for Boyfriend of Murdered Blogger Grips America. A grim framing of that, of course. Markets rally after Evergrande's pledge to make interest payments indebted Chinese giant to meet bond deadline. Uh, on the front page of the Times too, it's the story about uh, Freshers' Week with the headline, The Return of No Holds Barred Freshers' Week. <sighs> oh, they sneak in a little bit of a News Corp story and they love to hide things about their parent company. On page 44, stuck in the news in briefs. News Corp in buyback. News Corp's board of directors has authorised a one billion stock repurpose re repurchase program. The owner of publications, including the Times, Sunday Times, the Sun, and the Wall Street Journal, said it was a tangible sign of his optimism over the future of the business. The new program covers both Class A and Class B stock. News Corp has announced an agreement that the collective voting power of, power of the Murdoch Family Trust and individual members of the family does not r rise above forty-four percent of Class B shares, which have voting powers. Uh, does any newspaper faithfully follow suicide guidelines? I say that generally the Guardian is is, fa is fairly good at following the Samaritans guidelines, but but again, uh, it's it's failed on that in the past. Um, God, oh, that's kind of like my hair just refuses to stay up. This one bit, this one bit. Um, 
and it's done it again. Uh, right, let's get to the obituaries. Pro uh, that girl's murder and the serial type amateur social media sleuthing has been horrible sight inside of modern society. Um, Liz Mysterio, I've yet to, yet to see suicided in print. Uh, yeah, thankfully, uh, I've seen it in the, in US uh, US uh, publications. Um, in the in, yeah, in the obituaries, Bob Leaf, public relations guru who persuaded the Soviets to take up the capitalist dark art as he built the biggest agency in the world, uh, has died. He was eighty nine. He uh, wrote a book called The Art of Perception: Memoirs of Life in PR. Uh, he used to uh, overcharge uh, Robert Maxwell. Um, he would go on to represent Rupert Murdoch, helping to win his battle against Robert Maxwell to gain control of the news world in 1969. Seven years later, years later, Leaf worked for Maxwell, though he was careful not to mention his role in the battle for the Sunday tabloid. The price you often paid for Maxwell's acceptance of your good ideas was not was to give up ownership. More often than not, he would claim the ideas as his own, declaring that he had already been thinking about them. He didn't always demand that you kissed his rear end, but he liked you heading in that direction. Leaf eventually resigned from the Maxwell account in 1990, a year or so before the media baron's death, because it had become a terribly difficult account to work on, and our people had had enough. Yeah. Uh, News Corp, uh, News Corp buying stock back uh, should be illegal, but news should not be for profit, says uh, C122H122. Kinu92, talking of Bond films earlier, I rewatched Tomorrow Devon Dies last night, where a megalomaniac News Corp director tries to start war, uh, World War Three between the UK and China with a literal stealth ship to try to sell more newspapers. Yes, Rupert Murdoch would love to have a stealth ship. Uh, on page 52, the Earl of Antrim has died. Our paintings conservator at the Tate Gallery and first to spot the potential of Bankside Power Station as a site for the Tate Modern. He was 86. And Dr. Joan um, Ulliott, doctor and long-distance runner who fought male chauvinism to campaign successfully for women to compete in marathons, has died. She was 80. Um, she took up running in her 30s and uh, was success, very successful. Uh, ugly tr they're trying to sell you a telescope so you can uh, do your own uh, amateur production of rear window. Uh, some ugly trousers available in Air Force, Torp, Grey, Biscuit, Navy and Black. Uh, just £27 a pair. Mm. Still disgusting. Um, in the sport, Joshua has another 12 fights in him. Claims Eddie Hearn. Well, of course he does. Mike Atherton says player power is behind, uh, the, uh, behind the, the issues in cricket. Uh, having a dad like mine, you learn to love pressure. New England call-up Lewis Liner talks to Alex Lowe about life growing up as the son of an Australian legend. Uh, Tottenham throw off shackles as Nuno returns to haunt old club. Wolves 2, Tottenham 2. Uh, Connolly back in the goals to uh, back in the goals to sink Swansea. Brighton to Swansea nil. Stuttering Leicester proved too strong. Millwall nil. Leicester 2. And West Ham changed 10 players and still show up Solskjaer. Manchester United nil, West Ham United one, and finally Arteta's men ensure that modest revival can not nearly finally. Uh, penultimately, Arteta's men ensure that modest revival continues. Arsenal three, Wimbledon nil. Finally, Chelsea one, Aston Villa one. Kepa makes a difference again in shootout win. Chelsea won four three on penalties. That's the times. Give me a score. Uh, Kinney, my trousers are also available in Biscuit, which is why I take a 42-inch waist. Pablo Bonzo, I wouldn't be surprised if Grey, Biscuit, Navy and Black also happen to be the name of Ch Johnson's childhood pets. Excellent. All right, now we're shifting to the Daily Mail, our final paper of the day, uh, which we're going to get through fairly swiftly. Um, all the 60 minus 69s from C122H, 122, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, octuple, negative nice, potentially. Uh, right, let's get the let's get the Daily Mail up. Right, front page of the Daily Mail. Uh, more on their campaign about GPs at the top, of course. Uh, main story: Britain faces winter of woe, uh, and Boris likens Macron to a jilted lover. Le bus stop. Well, he would know about jilting lovers, wouldn't he? Uh, on page three, um, they cover Kate Moss's um, daughter walking on the uh, fashion runway. Uh, on page five, Uma Thurman, dark secret of my abortion after getting pregnant in teens by older man. I'm not sure if she said dark secret. Outrage as Scotland decriminalises all drugs without a vote. I think it's a good idea, frankly. Um, power firms fall like dominoes is the cover of the continuation of that. 
Uh, Kinney United 2 uh, pushing the well-known theory, and I agree with this one. Upper class names the wrong way around. They call their wives and daughters dogs names like Biscuit and Muffy and their dogs women's names. Yeah. Could Fifi the Llama hold the key to curing COVID? Not if Keir Starmer has anything to do with it. Uh, on page nine, Boris's powerful support for mail campaign. PM, thousands will suffer if they don't see GP face to face. If only he were prime minister and could do something about it. Uh, on pages uh, 10 and 11, eight in 10 people want to see GP in person. I mean, they're really pushing this one. Um, Henry D says, resurrecting the class war, Angela's attacks were as subtle as a blunderbuss. Again, just, they can never just say, oh, she did a great job and Dominic Raab was shit. Uh, Dan Buster Saar blamed Pill for son's death. Campaigners have called for Roaccutane to be banned for many years, but it's still prescribed on the NHS for severe acne. Um, yeah, there's been years and years and years of story about Roaccutane and, and problems with it. Um, of course, they cover the Connery Bond story. Uh, Truss pushes around to set Nazanin free. Uh, right, because I'm, I'm sure she can manage to do that. Uh, on pages uh, 10 and, uh, sorry, 16 and 17. Now, eco mob face being banned from all motorways. Thou shalt not block the t M25, they say, as if that is uh, car carved in stone. On page 19, Roldar was brilliant and deeply forward, cruel and anti Semitic, uh, writes Richard Kay. So, what will Harry and Meghan say about Netflix 500 million golden ticket for Roll the Rotten? Yes, they've managed to make a story about Roldal. Actually, a story about Harry and Meghan. Pathetic. On page 21, Stephen Glover, the most zombie-looking motherfucker in the British press, says, Lesson from Boris's US trip. Biden's a liability for Britain and can't be trusted. What? Because Boris Johnson can be. Um, fraud victims lose four million a day in scams. Many of them are Daily Mail readers. Uh, on page 24 and 25, what a rock and roller coaster. They write about various things that have happened in Phil Collins' life. Um, oh, here's, here's their coverage of the, of the mock trial. As leading human rights lawyer hosts school's mock trial of wealthy Tory MP over family links to slave trade. Is this really how we want our children to be taught? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on pages uh, 28 and 29, um, Bassa Aspinall, the first ever interview with Bassa Aspinall, son of flamboyant high society naturalist John Aspinall. He says he played with wild animals as a toddler and enjoyed the silverback rages of his Claremont set father, John Aspinall, before fleeing from his birthright as revealed in this astonishing escape, escaping the madness of my family's human zoo. Human zoo. Um... Yeah, he's artist. He's promoting his, his art. Uh, any longer with Boris, I may saw Xi Jinping. So C one twenty two H one twenty two. September twenty third, twenty twenty one is the day. And in from the Daily Mail archive in nineteen thirty nine. Uh, September 23rd, 1939. Britain must lose many of its glowing fields of flowers. Vegetables will be planted in their place to increase the food reserves. Growing flowers are not to be destroyed, but no seed for annuals should now be planted. Onions, carrots, potatoes, cereals, and so forth should take their place. On this day in 1991, Donald Trump was in the news. Donald Trump says his romance with starlet Marla Marples is over for good. I want to remain good friends with her, the troubled 45-year-old tycoon was quoted as saying, but it's time to step aside and look in other directions. Uh, they married in 1993 and divorced in 1999. Um, happy birthday to Nicholas Witchell. Nope. And very much so to Baroness Floella Benjamin. Also born on this day, Aldo Morrow. Uh, born 1916, died in 1978. 55 days after being kidnapped by the far-left Red Brigade's terror group. The body of the five-time former Italian Prime Minister was found in the boot of a runner fort in Rome. He was considered a front-runner for the presidency in elections that year. Uh, also born on this day in 1897, died in 1984, Walter Pigeon, the Oscar-nominated actor, starred in The Bad and the Beautiful, and Mrs. Miniver. The latter starred his longtime screen partner, Greer Garson, of whom he said, I did eight pictures with her and we never had a bad word between us. Pigeon got his break after Fred Astaire heard him sing at a party and gave his name to Broadway producers. On this day in, 19, in 1896, Queen Victoria became the longest reigning monarch in British history. And in 2001, Kylie Minogue went to number one on the UK sales chart with Can't Get You Out of My Head. It would have become... It would become the most played pop song of the noughties. Uh, today's quote of the day is Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, who said, Fate is a name for facts yet not uh, not yet passed under the fire of thought for causes which are unpenetrated. 
Uh, joke of the day. What kind of driver never gets a parking ticket? That's what kind of driver never gets a parking ticket? A screwdriver. Uh, Mass should be taken by all A-level pupils is uh, the claim of a new report from the Higher Education Policy Institute. No, thank you. Uh, a grand a woman, a woman who is a grandmother, has been jailed. Uh, for joyriding, having had 90 previous convictions. Only, she's 44, so it's a bit deceptive to, for them to focus on her being a grandmother, isn't it? Uh, female magazine. Uh, so often, social media is the only way for women to meet partners, and a growing number of divorces re divorcees rely on it. But our expose lays the dangers every singleton must know. Sinister side of the midlife dating apps. A female investigation by Antonia Hoyle. Um, uh, in the um, should the next Bond be played by a woman is the debate Rowan Pelling says yes Bond is more about menace than gender and Tanya Gold says no why make us play this clap why make us play this clapped out sex addict Let's stop making Bond films maybe um Jenny Murray says, We didn't fight for equality to be erased. More of that shit. Uh, cancer isn't a battle. It's all down to luck. That's true. Uh, she talks about her mother's advice on sweaters and something about candles. Whatever. Um, there's a big holiday supplement. Uh, I also made the US final, but unlike Emma, the most I won was £15, says Christine Truman Janes. She did that in 1961. Teenagers, toddlers, tantrums at the same time as the menopause, writes Laura B Biggs. Laura Biggs fell pregnant, fell pregnant, again at 47. Uh, give her a medal for enduring what happened next. Uh, the story about families that have pets as horses. The pets are, the horses are cute. Look at the little, like, ponies. Sorry, yeah, the ponies. Uh, this pony is called Jack. This pony is called... What is this pony called? Mr. Foddles! <laughs> we are a pro Mr. Foddles stream. Look at Mr. Foddles. Um, Kinu92. Oh no, there's terrible midlife dating apps used by rich divorcees. So terrible. What are these terrible sites? So I know how to avoid them, says Kinu92. The next bond should be a polycule, says Fluff Weasel. Yes. Yes. Anyway. Uh, Mr. F Mr. Foddles is, is fucking amazing. Um, in the uh, date thing today, it's um, in the blind date. It's Romka, 29, um, going on a date with Ali, 33. Uh, headline on her side. At the end of the date, I had to ask what his name was. Uh, on Headline on his, si uh, her, his side, she wanted to take custody of my credit card after I lost it. Romka's verdict, 7 out of 10. The, the, uh, she liked the delicious food, no regrets. They had coffee as friends. Ali's verdict, 10 out of 10. Regrets, none. Uh, coffee. He liked her... Uh, um, Thought she was good, but uh, was her perfectly fine that he, she saw no romance. Interviews of them there by uh, Samantha Bitt. Mr. Fuddles forever, yes. Yes. Mr. Fuddles may have just replaced uh, little Sebastian in my uh, in my heart. Um, today's TV recommendation is The Hairy Bikers Go North, 8pm. Uh, BBC Two, sorry, my nose is really itching from... <sighs> Stupid hay fever. Must be done soon. Philip, Prince Philip, the royal family remembers, gets four stars from Daily Mail. Of course it does. And Neutrino, hunting the ghost particle, also gets uh, gets three stars, rather. Um, in the cartoons today, Garfield and John are just hanging out. And uh, Garfield doesn't want a hug. He just wants a big pizza. In Chloe and Co, they're talking about men and sat down, but not drinking. And in Fred Bassett, Fred and the lads have got stuck in a maze. But I'm sure they'll get out again. Today's horrible poems here. Uh, create expectations. A young couple were walking past our door when one of them stopped and said, what that for? I told them it was called a milk crate, left out for the milkman who was rarely late. They could not believe such a thing still existed. We told them we were pleased deliveries persisted. Then they went on their way looking quite bemused, probably thinking those people are old and confused. We've had that small crate for 50 years. Just think for us, it's part of our life to enjoy the milkman's clink. That is from Mike Main. Stop it, Mike Main. Uh, Limerick from IG Fenner f frequently appears here. Jeremy Greaves has reached his final score. It's his time. He's in his time. He struck winners galore. A true old school type. No pretensions or hype. They don't make them like that anymore. Oh God. 
And finally, nursery rhyme of our time comes from Bethan Morgan, who writes, Pussy Willow, Pussy Willow, will you will you be seen in Chelsea Prize Gardens in front of the Queen? Pussy Willow, Pussy Willow, the show will accord Best Weed and Wildflower its Eco Award. Oh, fucking hell. God, the poems. Gulag for all poem writers at the Daily Mail. Straight to the point letters, Sandra Parsons writes, Boris, stop worrying about global warming and concentrate on keeping Britain warm. Alan Holton says, The Prime Minister assures us there won't be power cuts this winter. We better stock up on candles. David Brent, not that one, writes, Time to start fracking and using wave power. Anthony Dean says, Insulate Britain or insult Britain. Malcolm Lee says, Theatres are back. Without, any gla- without my glasses, the stage is a blur. With a face mask and fogged up spectacles, it's not even visible. Adeyemi Banjo says, Instead of piping water from Scotland or Wales to England, repair and maintain reservoirs. Mike Scales says, Give our two useless aircraft characters and nu- carriers and nuclear subs to Australia in return for patrol vessels to police our insecure coastline. Nah. Paul Simpson says, I'm not surprised the ratings for Strictly Come Dancing were so low. No one recognises the so-called celebrities. Oh, Tony Gamble of Norwich. Oh, you're letting us down, Tony, says. The TV adverts that annoy me are the ones with left-handed drive cars. Why would you write that in? And Steve Milton says, If the BBC persists on so many repeats, can it please show Parkinson from 1971 to 2007? Uh, Kinu92 says, I agree with David Brent. Used to work with people who studied wave energy generation. Really interesting and useful tech. Needs to be more investment and not as good when combined with title. Yeah, occasionally there's a normal one there. I love that everyone who writes to the mail knows everything. Yeah, that's the thing. They know everything. Um, and the recipe today is fig, burrata, and prosciutto tartine. Uh, prosciutto tartine, sorry. It's fine. Like, it looks fine. They're trying to sell you Manuka honey. They're trying to sell you uh, vacuum cleaners. They're trying to sell you cashmere jumpers and coins, 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 da 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 coins. Yes, today's coin for just nine ninety five. It is the Winnie the Pooh commemorative coin featuring Winnie the Pooh on both sides. Not really a coin, is it? Because it's not legal tender. It's like a Winnie the Pooh commemorative token. Anyway, Winnie the Pooh coin. Yours for just nine ninety five plus four pounds postage and packing. Coins. Uh, inevitably, they they're trying to flog you. Mobility scooters. And finally, in the sports. On the back page, betting ban revealed. No more gambling firms to sponsor front of football shirts. Turns out that that's not maybe actually happening, but I hope it does. Fluff Weasel, I want to see the letters that are too crazy for even the Daily Mail to print. I think they have to be burnt. Um, Kin United 2, Kevin Bridges' voice. I'll have you know that's legal gender. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, thank you for joining me today uh, for the show. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, remember, if you're not yet subscribed to the newsletter, do do subscribe. You can subscribe for free. Um, and then if you like it, uh, upgrading to the paid version really does help me out, and I, and I appreciate that. Thank you as well to people who uh, subscribe here on Twitch. And if you just want to support the show but you don't want to subscribe, uh, chuck in some coins. Coins! into the paper fund uh, which is paypal.me forward slash conquest of the useless I will see you all tomorrow thank you very much Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube please like comment and subscribe Uh, thanks a lot bye bye